A tumbleweed tank? A gun that shoots tornadoes? Airborne mines? Here are 10 more of the most bizarre weapons of World War II you've never heard of. Number 10. The V3 Cannon Hitler liked few things more than shock and awe, and what would be more shocking and awesome than a gun that fired multiple times? The V3 Cannon was designed to be the most advanced and powerful cannon in Germany's arsenal, and it would increase the power of its ammo by hitting it with multiple extra boosts of propellant. As the projectile passed different points in the long barrel, its heat would trigger solid fuel rocket boosters that would increase the projectile's power. It passed initial tests, and German designers thought it could be used to bombard London into submission. Then it all went wrong. The prototype seemed promising, and a model was placed in northern France where the projectiles could span the English Channel. But as early tests at the site fell short, funds were running short, and the project was cut back. Allied bombing raids destroyed much of the site, and soon the plan was abandoned. However, similar weapons were used later to bombard Luxembourg in the last year of the war. But as the Nazi war machine came to a crash, Halt in 1945, the ultimate fate of the V3 cannon was to be a curiosity of strange weaponry. But it was more intimidating than this next weapon. Number 9. The Bob Semple Tank As World War II raged on, the southern nations of Australia and New Zealand worried that Japan would invade and overwhelm them. While both were involved in the war, their home front defenses were lacking and they had no homegrown fighting vehicles. New Zealand's Minister of Works, Bob Semple, wanted to change that. They would have to work with what they had, and what New Zealand mostly had were hardy old farming vehicles. And so began the greatest makeover in World War II. Can a tractor truly be transformed into a top-of-the-line fighting tank? Magic 8-Ball says, Outlook Cloudy. The Bob Simple tank was built on a standard Caterpillar D8 crawler tractor, easy to get in New Zealand, and equipped with armor and machine guns. However, the tank was small and hard to use. One gunner had to be lying down on a mattress to use his gun, and the tank was armored with corrugated plating rather than full armor. In early tests, the armor didn't hold up, and the heavy vehicles were hard to maneuver. In the end, the tanks were scrapped before even making it to combat, probably for the best. But they did have a strange place in New Zealand's heart as a symbol of wartime ingenuity. But some oddball weapons weapons are successes, smashing successes. Number 6. Bouncing Bomb It doesn't look like much. A large rolling cylinder that resembles an oil drum. In decades to come, video game players would watch a plumber jump over barrels that look a lot like it. But the Bouncing Bomb packed a powerful punch, and it might have helped turn the tide of war for the Allies. When the British Royal Air Force was looking to destroy some key German dams, they ran into a problem. The dams were protected at the base by anti-torpedo nets, and damaging the tops wouldn't destroy them. They needed a new type of bomb, and British engineer Barnes Wallace delivered. The bombs, codenamed Upkeep, were designed to be fired at a lower height than typical bombs and weighed much less than conventional bombs that could destroy the dam. In the famous Operation Chastity, a team of soldiers known as the Dam Busters engaged in a risky mission to deliver the payload. The bombs could be dropped at just 60 feet, bounce across the water, then sink under and explode, cracking the base of the dams and causing massive floods in the region. It wasn't even technically a bomb. It functioned more like a massive depth charge, but it was as effective as the test showed although the use was extremely specific. But not every inventive weapon design works out. Number 7. Unrotated Projectile One of the biggest challenges for the UK in World War II was stemming the massive bombardment coming from Nazi-occupied Europe. That created a lot of unique anti-aircraft weapons, some more effective than others. The UP projector sounded like a great concept, a rocket system that would launch without being spin-stabilized. Instead, it would launch a rocket that would release a mine attached to three parachutes. The wires attached to the parachute would snag the enemy planes, pulling the mine into them. As soon as the mine hit the enemy, kablam! One less plane that could bombard London. But what works on paper doesn't always work in practice. The system had many flaws. First, it was slow to load and the crews responsible were often vulnerable to enemy fire while working on it. Second, it was a low-tech solution in an increasingly high-tech war, and the maneuverable German planes might be able to dodge the wires. But when Winston Churchill intended a test, a bigger flaw became clear. If the winds were too strong, the bombs could actually be blown back onto the ship and blow them up. The dummy rounds caused no real damage, but in war this could be a disaster, so the unrotated projectile was consigned to the storage locker before long. But the Allies weren't the only ones creating bizarre weapons. Number 6. Windkanone Hitler was a big fan of big ideas, and there was no bigger idea than the one that his army could literally harness the forces of nature against the enemy. The Nazis created many large weapons, but this one, with a distinctive upward-pointing snout, intended to create a synthetic tornado. A large pipe would be filled with explosive gas, a turbine would spin it, and it would
would be released into the atmosphere through a rotating nozzle. Air would be drawn into the spiral and create a vortex that could down enemy aircraft as they approach without ever firing a shot. But if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. The wind cannone did actually work, creating tornadoes that could destroy wooden sheds over 300 feet from the gun. But when it came to shooting them up in the air, it was a different story. The gun only created tornadoes around 900 feet above the ground, and aircraft on bombing raids are usually high above that level. So the wind cannone was a scientific breakthrough, but there's a big difference between that and actually being a useful weapon in combat. Hey, at least everyone on the test got one heck of a show. Other weapons of the war were a lot smaller. Number 5. The William Tell The Office of Strategic Services played a key role in winning the war, sending American spies around the globe, and effective spycraft required stealth, which meant OSS members wouldn't be able to carry standard noisy handguns. Many strange weapons were created, often with mixed results, and one found its origins hundreds of years ago in the Middle Ages. The William Tell was believed to be the quietest weapon in the OSS arsenal, and it combined the accuracy of a crossbow with the power of a slingshot. But how did it handle in combat? While it worked like a slingshot, it used a rubber harness instead of a traditional bill that made it a lot more compact and muffled the telltale snap of the slingshot. It could launch a deadly projectile at close range, but the problem was arrows rarely kill silently. The enemy is hit, and even if it's a fatal blow, the odds are they're going to stay conscious long enough to let everyone know they've been shot and there's an enemy afoot. So the OSS kept looking for the perfect stealth weapons that would help them win the war. Another attempt was more successful and stranger. Number 4. Sedgley OSS-38 The Sedgley OSS-38 was a simple device. It was a single-shot pistol that was ideal for covert operations and assassinations. Geared toward the Pacific Theater, it was meant to make it easier for the assassin to cover their tracks. To cover up an assassination, hitmen would often wear gloves to keep themselves from being identified. This cut out the middleman by attaching the pistol to the back of a simple cowhide glove, making it a portable weapon that the users could wear and disguise in the sleeve of a long coat. So how did the glove pistol actually work? Instead of having a standard trigger, the pistol was armed with a bar extending beyond the barrel. Triggering it was as simple as loading and cocking the pistol safely, then making a fist and pressing the trigger next to the target's body. One shot is fired and the target is fatally shot, without a gun being anywhere in sight. The OSS didn't divulge how many times, if any, this unique weapon was used, but it's believed they manufactured as many as 200 guns for use on top secret missions. Other unique World War II weapons were a lot bigger. Number 3. The X-Class Submarine When you think about submarines, you usually think about massive vessels streaming through the waters, but during World War II, the British were looking for stealth. That's where the X-Class came into play. These miniature submarines were built during the 1940s and needed to be towed to their target by a larger submarine. Once they were unleashed, they could hold a crew and some powerful weapons. They were ideal for sneaking into target areas while being less visible to German sonar. But there were a few difficulties with the X-Class. For one thing, to get the crew from the main submarine to the X-Class meant they needed a third vehicle, a dinghy, to ferry the crew, during which they would be vulnerable. The X-Class was also prone to leaking in the early tests, with several ships being lost. The model was liked by the brass because it made it possible for crews to stay submerged far longer than other small models, but practical issues derailed it quickly, and the X-Class was ultimately scuttled. The small submarine went to a museum, but the Royal Navy built on the design and introduced better, hardier models. But as we head toward number one, things are getting really strange. Number two, Kugelpanzer. Imagine being on the battlefield and suddenly you see what looks like a giant tumbleweed rolling toward you. But it's not a tumbleweed. It's a spherical rolling tank designed by Nazi Germany, and it's going to roll right over you. It's the Kugelpanzer, one of the strangest weapons ever designed for use in World War II. It's a one-man vehicle with thin but durable armor, two rolling treads attached to the sides, and an eye slit for the driver to see through. Only one model was ever found and was captured by the Soviets in Manchuria. But even with it in their custody, there were more questions than answers. The one model found was unfinished and seems to have never been used in combat. It was designed to be used as a light reconnaissance vehicle rather than a combat vehicle because it had no attached weapons, although some could have been added later. The unfinished model is now on display at the Kubinka Tank Museum, and debates continue over what exactly it was supposed to be. The only thing that's certain, whatever it was, it wasn't successful enough for the Nazis to mass produce it. But if you think those are strange, get ready to meet the factory of the strange. Number 1. Hobart's Funnies In the latter days of the Second World War, the British Army was seeking an edge. They created a unit to develop new tanks with enhanced features that would make up for the weaknesses their standard tanks faced during amphibious raids. Some delivered, while others were more curiosities than anything else. The unit commander, Major General Percy Hobart, would enter military history for just how strange his pet vehicles were. How strange? How about a tank with a curtain of mine flails attached to it? Or maybe the double onion, a tank with a massive metal frame holding demolition charges. It would
would be pressed against the wall and blown via a detonating cable after the tank retreated. Most of these tanks worked, but for only one specific purpose. So after the war, the British had a collection of the oldest, most unique military vehicles ever created. And hey, they won the war, so it's a great conversation piece. For more of this series, check out the original, Weirdest World War II Weapons You've Never Heard Of, or watch this video instead.